required meetings, typically quarterly, of the Ohio Democratic Party's Executive Committee. It's a combination of elected uh, Central Committee members and then appointed uh, members who make up the Executive Committee, I mean, uh, Executive Committee of the party. You're all welcome to come back. It's a public meeting, and as you just witnessed, all the votes are public, and uh, our voice votes, so stand-up votes, those kinds of things. So we will start with Jo. This is Jo Ellen Ingalls. She is a, a, a reporter here in Central Ohio, works for Public Radio. Yeah. So let me ask you the question that was brought up out there. They, uh, some of your fellow Democrats say you didn't vet your gubernatorial candidate well enough. What about it? Do you feel like you vetted him well enough? And is is there any chance that uh, you might decide to take him off the ticket? <laughs> uh, we don't typically, for those of you who this is the first time, I rarely answer Joe directly about such questions. Mark, I always do. But uh, vetting is always done uh, within each campaign. Uh, it's a function of the 99 House candidates, the incumbents, the 33 Senate, as well as the seven, six, seven, depending on the year and then the federal candidates, statewide federal candidates, congressional candidates. Um, vetting is an interesting word oftentimes uh, mentioned by those who aren't really educated in the field of, of politics and, and how political campaigns uh, are run. I, I think having not grown up in Columbus, not lived in a big city, but lived in a place like Port Clinton where you win elections by knocking on screen doors and, and having town halls, and I'm also a member of the legislature, and, over the course of the last few years, I've had more than 90 town hall meetings. And I can tell you the number of times in the last month in my town hall meetings, my door-to-door, -door, my events, that I've been asked about whether or not Ed Fitzgerald had a, a driver's license for some or all or a period of time over 10 years or 2 years or 8 years, 12 years, whatever the period of time is. Here's what I'm asked about. Why Ottawa County is among the highest unemployment rates, has among the highest unemployment rates in the state, and at the, the time when half a million Northwest Ohioans have went without drinking water for four days, uh, why is it that Governor Kasich wants to repeal uh, the Clean Water Act and everything that implies with safe drinking water across not just Northwest Ohio but across the state? I mention this because there are so many more important issues that Ohioans are confronted with, and, and with all due respect, uh, those are the kinds of issues and the solutions to those concerns that we're going to offer and have been offering. We're going to do that for the next 69 days. You, uh, no offense, Joe, you uh, may be tired of that answer, but it's the answer that Ohioans want to hear. It's not the answer that the editorial page editors of the Columbus Dispatch want to hear. It's not, it's not uh, the kinds of things that some people want to hear, but it's going to be what we're going to say because Ohioans whether they're working formally at or met, want to know what John Kasich has done in the last four years. Those who want access to clean drinking water in Toledo want to know why John Kasich's trying to repeal the Clean Water Act. So there's there's the answer. Now we just work our way over. Chris, I'm Ron. Hey, Ron. Hi, they like me up there at the Warren Chronicle Tribune. They do. Uh, let, me, let me clear a few things up. Uh, the Warren Chronicle Tribune editorialized against me this, this Sunday. Saturday or Sunday, Ron? Sunday. I don't know because I'm not a subscriber, okay. but I did get somebody to hack into the website and give me the free subscription. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. Mark's recording everything I say, so you I have to now say. Found the way uh, right. Okay. No. And so, so I read it, and, and the editorial suggests, well, states, that there are several counties in the Ohio Republican Party okay. that continue to have secret ballots. First, the, the Democratic National Convention's bylaws don't apply to the Republican Party. I wish they would, because if they did, Marriage equality would be the law of the land. Pay equity for women would be the law of the land. Clean drinking water would be the law of the land. So if the Warren Chronicle editorial board wants to embrace what the Republican Party wants the Democrats or vice versa to do, I would rather be the Democratic National Committee's bylaws. The Republican Party is not bound by those bylaws. It, it has nothing to do with our discussions. Additionally, there are 88 county parties Bill DeMore serves as secretary of the party. He also serves as the liaison between the county parties and the state parties. Any time there is an unfortunate circumstance, in this case, a death of an elected official midterm, where a vote must, to occur, must occur, Bill's responsibility is to immediately reach out to the county chair and advise them of the process, the public vote, for instance. Okay. And it, it, it occurs, unfortunately, due to vacancy of death, sometimes it occurs when someone has to leave office because they've been elected to something else. It's a very common occurrence. 
every time that has occurred, and every time, every time, we've been we've been uh, notified that there may be a problem with their bylaws of the local party. It's been addressed and changed. I've been a chairman of this party since December 19, 2005. This is the first time that Joe Ingalls has stood in my office and talked about this issue. And it'll probably be the last time, because it doesn't happen, with all due respect, to those who think that this is a common occurrence. Uh, chairman Politka indicated, for instance, that it, it was something that was occurring in Columbiana County. Mm -hmm. I, I was struck by that because Bill got off the phone with Denny Johnson, the chair of Columbia County, and Denny said, you know, we haven't done that in years. So I understand. It, it's a concern to, to friends who may come down here have a difference of opinion. They're welcome to have their opinion. They just can't have their opinion part of the bylaws of the Trouble County Party. When we spoke last week, or yes, last week, um, you said in the conversation, this is what will happen tonight. <coughs> what will happen? But you said what will happen was Dan would be removed temporarily, Kathy placed oh, in. did I? Yes. Why the change of course? Well, I don't know. It's a change of course. I, we start the process. The okay. process is an examiner, interviews, okay. uh, goes up, collects facts, and reports back to the executive committee. And in the intervention or intervening period of time, the sanctions remain in place. And make no doubt, uh, when, when the examiner comes back, mm -hmm. as you witness, the executive committee has no tolerance for those who want to shirk their responsibilities and have no no concern for the bylaws. And oddly enough, this, this happens across party lines. There's an ongoing dispute between the Republican Secretary of State and the chairman of the Lucas County Republican Party about process. That that concern has also been, uh, that difference of opinion has been, has been uh, uh, shown by the Republican chairman of the state party and the Lucas County Republican Party. These are very strong personalities at every, in both parties, at every level, who are leading organizations. Sometimes the organizations are large and complicated, sometimes not, but the personalities remain strong. With all due respect to the chairman, he is wrong. Yes. Hi, uh, Jeff, Flip Coolidge from WKBN. <laughs> yes. Uh, tell us about, uh, um, I guess, uh, with with what happened here tonight, I mm -hmm. guess, uh, are you ha happy the way that things are progressing, I guess, with this, or would you have liked to have seen uh, Dan come down and say, look, we'll work this out before we get to this well, there's, point, or, or how there, do there, Yeah, there's no, uh, and I appreciate you coming down, there's no debate. It's, it's not, a, hey, let's negotiate or compromise. He's got to have bylaws that are in accordance with the DNC's bylaws. Now, that's not just my opinion. That's the opinion of the chair of the DNC's Rules Committee. You can't get much higher than that. And until that happens, the sanctions were in place. Now, Dan, if the bylaws say he has to call a meeting in seven days or five days, whatever the window is, he can certainly call a meeting, adjust the bylaws. He must have a revote in accordance because we don't recognize the vote as ever occurring. Once that occurs, then access to the, to the voter file and the sample ballot uh, begins. The examiner's role continues. He, uh, real quick, he was mentioning that uh, that they haven't been cut off. Have they been cut off? Or uh, yeah, the, yeah the, vote, the voter file has been cut off. For, for uh, Dan's not on the voter file, so he's never been trained on it. Uh, he, so he would not know that. Okay. So the voter file is, is something. It's an online tool that candidates, elected officials, and others have access to. It's web-based, and and you log in. We track everyone who's on it. There are hundreds of people who are on it, from precinct workers to candidates running for, you know, the candidate running for Secretary of State, Nina Turner, uh, everyone in between. So we know who's on and what, what is occurring. Oh, no, no. Huh. Cameraman, don't have any questions. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Jennifer Balligan. Yeah, sure, Jen. Um, sorry. Yeah, it, uh, Dan and his attorneys are um, trying to say that, that you went against the ODP's bylaws um, with the sanctions because uh, he was trying to say that um, the sanctions are only issued um, as far as the, the voter mailings and that kind of stuff goes um, if they're not paying um, their dues. I'm not sure exactly what the exact uh, uh, language was for that, sure. but um, what do you have to say about The that? bylaws are available online. You can review them. There's a there is a chapter and verse regarding malfeasance and kinds of actions that uh, that a chair or anyone uh, may encounter that allows some flexibility for for me to to do the things that that uh, are necessary to keep order within the party. And with all due respect to, to Chairman Politico or anyone else, 
he's free to run for state central committee and, and do what he thinks will make our party stronger. Um, his representatives from Trumbull County voted in support of the resolution. Sean O'Brien uh, spoke, as you heard, in support of the resolution. So, you know, I, you know, strong personalities have strong differences of opinion. Uh, in this case, uh, I've been wrong before, but in this case, no, I'm, I'm right. And, and the DNC's uh, uh, rules and the Ohio Democratic Party's rules are the rules that have to be reflected by the, the Trumbull County Party. And uh, let me let me say this: after I'm done here, uh, Bill DeMora, who's behind us, is he can go into detail about the particular um, rule, the number, the chapter, and walk you through it if you like. Hey, can you just give like a brief rundown of this, how this process is going to work, you know, what comes next in this investigation? Um, it's it's an, an, examination, an examination, and that's uh, Tim Burke, who, who is chair of the Hamilton County Party. He is a former uh, county chair of the year. He's one of the leaders of our organization and ha has been for many, many years. He was formerly chair of the Chairs Association. He has been charged by the executive committee with uh, collecting the facts and reporting back those facts to the executive committee uh, for uh, censure, I think it was censure or removal, or uh, we'll get you the resolution. But it's his job to go out there and collect the facts and then report back to the executive committee. Uh, the facts are quite clear by his own admission. Uh, Chairman Polifka uh, did not follow ODP laws, he, he uh, bylaws, and he did it because he thought it wasn't rooted in democracy. The foundation of our, our government, he said, was was rooted in the secret ballot. So you you can't have secret ballots. It's, it's against the rules. And oh, by the way, members of Congress uh, in, the, in, in the Continental Congress uh, and to today have to vote publicly. And the Declaration of Independence, as we all remember, was, was signed by people. Uh, it wasn't secret. Uh, so you know, he's entitled to his opinion. He's just wrong. Didn't, am I understanding this right? They did a secret ballot, but then they came back and did a voice vote at some point. And why isn't why wasn't that sufficient? Uh, secret ballots are strictly prohibited by the DNC and the ODP. But the voice vote doesn't count at, after that point. Or? No, you can't have six secret ballots, three secret ballots, and two secret ballots to clear up all the concern about opponents, and then have one voice vote for the one person that's left. It it's on its face. It, it's just, it's not worth responding to. Um, Sanction-wise, no, no voter list, any other sanctions that are in place? Yeah, access to the voter file, access to sample ballots, access to the voter indiction, the, the, the reduced postage that state parties, Republican and Democrat, offer. Uh, that's all been uh, eliminated by, by the, this re resolution uh, for candidates, elected officials, and activists in Trumbull County. Now, there will be some exceptions. Multi-jurisdictional candidates, for instance, can achieve access to the voter file through adjoining districts or adjoining counties, for instance. Congressman Tim Wright's an example of that. Is there a time frame for this examination? Um, I, you know, I hear a lot of things. Well, I, I, I hear a lot of things about whether or not they're going to, uh, to meet and change their bylaws next week. or So it's as long as that takes, okay? But if it doesn't, happen then there's two months and that's prescribed as well 60 days and then we'll meet again and we'll take this matter up again if they change the bylaws do you still pursue no it, uh, the, the chair is in, empowered to to remove sanctions uh, when things are, are remedied and that's I'm, I'm hopeful that the, the chairman Polifka comes to his senses and and, and with all due respect to the good press and the Warren Chronicle Tribune that this may be affording the readers, I'm sure they'd much rather talk about uh, why we continue to struggle as a state under John Kasich's leadership. Why the things that matter to most everyday Ohioans just simply don't matter to John Kasich. How he can go before the farming community, for instance, this week and suggest that his administration has done great things in the agricultural community without even talking about his rollback of uh, of, uh, of, of the kinds of uh, property tax uh, uh, credits and, and reductions that we've worked for. Sorry about that. That's all right. That's a good place to interrupt. <laughs> um, Let's get out of room. So if they change the bylaws at this point, is this over? Uh, we, we would view it as something that Bill, the, the, the liaison to the county party, would go up and review the bylaws and ensure that a revote took place. Once that occurs, the sanctions would be lifted. 
Tim Burke would continue his examination, come back with the facts, make a recommendation to the executive committee. Based on his recommendations, we would proceed accordingly. I suspect that he would recommend that, uh, that because the remedy has been sought and received, that we should move on. Nothing? No, I have, I, have a, I have a nice question. I have a sort of a two-parter. Okay. Uh, like you know, you've got a little sh sign back that says, don't give up the ship. Would you like to submit it by yeah. writing? No, I'm going to ask, tell it right now, exactly. John Spinelli with the Ohio News Bureau, in case, in case you forgot. Fifteen years. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. There are some folks that think that the ship is sinking by the bow, and the bow means that Fitzgerald. Uh, at this point, with 69 days left into the election, can you go through each one of the statewides and predict which one of your candidates is, is going to end up on the winning side on November 4th? I feel very confident when we're judged on whether or not our solutions reflect the concerns of Ohioans or not, we're going, to, we're going to win and we're going to be successful. If you ask somebody, for instance, regarding the Secretary of State's race, whether or not unfettered access to the polls is something that's important, they'll agree with Nina Turner. You know, voting is not a privilege. It's not a privilege. It's not a privilege set aside for a wealthy few, the highest donors, the biggest donors. It's a constitutional right protected, as we've all witnessed through the Ohio Democratic Party's efforts, five times we've won in federal court. We're hopeful that we'll win a sixth time. If you talk to, to Connie Pillich and Josh Mandel and those who are looking at the treasurer's race, whether or not Josh Mandel's uh, relationships with, with Mr. Suarez, his ultimate conviction, uh, and his lies that he told repeatedly and was convicted for matter. People, people believe it matters. They want Josh uh, to be kicked out of office. They want Connie Pillich to be the protector of the taxpayer. John Carney has called for audits of, of Ohio's charter schools, as you witnessed. And if you were to find out, as, as you know, more than a billion dollars now spent on charter schools in the state and not a serious audit done, and that when, when charges in a Dayton charter school were brought forward about sexual contact among sixth graders, it was dismissed out of hand by the Department of Education. It's not the kind of oversight we need. John Carney's going to offer something quite different. And David Pepper, David Pepper against Mike DeWine. Mike DeWine ran for attorney general nine months and, and after getting his law license, which he didn't have for 10 years. We talk a lot about licenses, don't we, Joe? I guess. We talk a lot about licenses. I know, everybody left. Uh, we talk a it lot must about, have been my question. We, we, we talk a lot about licenses, don't we? Here's no. a license that matters, okay? You don't have, you don't give a three minute, I think it was, three minute uh, um, video regarding sexual harassment to all of your employees after after this crisis broke out, what you do is you admit you knew who was involved. You knew who was involved instead of hiding your friends and protecting your friends. It's clear. And I got to tell you, I, I know that it makes for great writing. And, and Joe and Henry and others, it, it makes for great writing. I get it, okay? But if you were to stop somebody in Zanesville, as a reporter did this week, and ask about the economy, I don't mind people judging the, 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 the governor and the challenger about what they're going to do with regard to the economy. The one time it came up regarding the licensed person said he didn't know it, didn't hear about it. Okay? we got to get our message out, and when we do, we win. How do, we turn, how do you turn out voters? No, You're going to have the best candidates in the world. If you don't turn out voters... We have proven that we, we are outspent uh, before, and we win. Sherry Brown was outspent two to one. How'd that go? Mitt Romney outspent Barack Obama two to one. How'd that go? You know, I, I'm not dismissing the importance of money. Okay? Is, are you still video recording? No, yeah. Okay, because I don't want to be overly flamboyant with my hands. Because Stan, can I'm, I'm hoping you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not dismissing the importance of money. It's very important. Sure. Okay. It's why John Kasich ran off and met with Sheldon Adelstein in, in uh, Adelson in uh, Las Vegas. It's why he has embraced the Koch brothers every step along the way. You know why he's not renewing the Clean Water Act, the 401 program? I know it's kind of in the weeds. It's not real glamorous for, a, for a, a, a reporter who only gets six column inches to fill. It's not really exciting to look through EPA files. You know why he's not doing it? Because the Koch brothers don't want him to do it. The Murray family don't want him to do it. They want unfettered access to destroy wetlands and streams in this state. And repealing the 401 program with comment ending on September 11th will allow them to do exactly that. And at the same time, hurt drinking water in Northwest Ohio. 
all of those issues over and over and over, we fall on the right side. So voter turnout is always the equalizer to money. It you is. can spend all the money you want in the world and people outvote you. That's it is. that. It is. So it is the SB5 coalition going to wake up and turn out I don't, in the next I, 69 I wouldn't, days? I wouldn't characterize it as waking up. Uh, we, we have been working. I know it's not glamorous. I know it doesn't attract a lot of attention. Uh, we have been working incredibly hard every step along the way, knowing we're going to be outspent up and down the ticket. This doesn't matter. We're going to be outspent for Supreme Court. John O'Donnell and Tom Lester, they're going to be competitive, and I think we're going to win one or two. Okay? And I know it doesn't get enough attention. But the fact is, it's one of the things we do well. And if we continue to do well, we're going to win in November. So let me ask you this. Do you is that one of those 60-second things, three-minute things? Well, my hands are going to be moving around and look like I'm having a seizure. I, I I'm glad you know what it is. Do you have